really, really sensitive to spoilers. There will be a couple story sequences we'll run into just as we as we play through today, so um, please be aware of that. But again, it's very early in the game, so you're not spoiling too much at all. For sure. So right now, mm -hmm. we're on the White Sand Cape. White we're looking Sand for castaways. Cape. Other 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 passengers of the Lombardia who have washed ashore on the dreaded Isle of Sable. Uh, so, we're currently in pursuit, hot pursuit, of a, uh, of a castaway. Fight okay. my way through these giant. Well, they're not so giant, but they are enemy crabs. Enemy crabs. Um, and they're armored enemies. And so, with armored enemies, you want to make sure you are using Sahad. He does the uh, corresponding damage type that will inflict the break status to armored enemies, allowing them to take. Uh, greater damage and go down easily. Um, currently playing on normal difficulty at the moment, so we're not going to hit too much difficulty. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> um, all right. There it is. Cool. I just turned on oh. chat side for not being fully engaged. Can you guys hear us? Okay. Can you hear the? Um, can you hear the game audio and the uh, uh -oh. dulcet tones of Robert's voice? Yeah, pretty dulcet. Nice, good to hear. Cool. So, let's talk a little bit about the Switch version of this game. What's new? Well, um, in terms of content, this is uh, content-wise the same as the PlayStation 4 version, meaning it has the cool um, extra bonus dungeon, as well as the Donna form changes and all the story information that goes along with um, mm -hmm. Donna's version. However, something else that's cool is that the DLC from the Vita version of the game is also on here as well. So a lot of the cool costumes that were only available in the beta version, like the pirate costumes, mm -hmm. um, those are in this now, uh, natively. So you can really look forward to that. And then we also have uh, the new, or should I say new, the, the uh, localization yes. patch that we did originally on the PlayStation 4 and the Vita version. This is natively contained in here. Mm -hmm. So uh, no patches on that for anything like that. Mm -hmm. We worked on that. We did work on that. That was a great time. That's why we're here today. <laughs> so we've hit our first location point. Mm -hmm. Memorable landscape, scenery, marked on the map. Um, what's great about location points is that they generally act as hubs for specific types of resources. So if you're ever at a point in the game where you want to craft something and you uh, may be low on a certain type of resource, you just hit up one of your location points and... Uh, they should have what you're looking for, provided you head to the right one. Um, still got more of these uh, moderately sized enemy crabs. Oh, but now we've got some seahorses, so we're going to switch to Adol, because these, these dudes are weak to Adol's, uh, Adol's weapon. Slash, right? Yes. There's slash, Pierce, and Blunt. Strike, right? No, Strike, you're right, I'm sorry. Get the, let's get those two. Next. No problem. I'm the one who usually got it wrong last time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so they're effective against different weapon types. Flip the break status. Makes enemies more vulnerable yeah. to uh, to your uh, uh, allies' attacks uh, when you do this. So it's very important that you are properly matching up against corresponding enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you're using the appropriate weapon type. Yeah. Uh, Sir Belf asks, will we get new Nintendo themed DLC? At, at the moment, unfortunately, nothing is planned. Um, we thought that would be super cool, too. Um, doesn't look like it's in the cards at the moment, but, Coconuts. you know, send in those emails and things like that, and hopefully it can be done maybe in the future. But at the moment, there's no, uh, no additional new DLC planned. Oh, who is that over yonder? It looks like a castaway. It's a fetching castaway. I wonder if she's single. <laughs> I wonder if her name's Allison. Let's find out. What a localization humor for you kids. Don't want to talk to her? I guess not. Hold on one second. I don't think she's going anywhere. Cool. 
Oh, um, hop into the menu real quick. I guess we can't. We actually do have some of the DLC. Let's let's uh, let's trick the party out on some hot duds. <clears throat> so here we're at the equipment menu. So we got some costumes. I uh, there it is. So oh wait, so I was told there'd be costumes. Items. Ah, you know what? We're we're getting ahead of ourselves. Hold on a second. Okay. So there these DLC items right now have not been opened. They're sitting ah. in their original packaging. Nice. Um, so once we open them, they're going to lose their street value. <laughs> uh, uh, but that's okay because we actually want to wear these. I guess we don't have to worry too much about the Kota and Homo since we're not going to get them yet. But. That's true. But those characters are, they show up later, so if you're sensitive to spoilers, well, we just spoiled you, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we got some attachments. Hug, hug Fina. Lilia. Fina, of course, being from first East game, and Lilia being from the second. Mm hmm. Ancient mask being from Salsetta. You know the mask of eyes, I believe, is an East One. Wow, oh, the mask, but I think it's like looks like the mask of the sun. Might be, might be a whole. Let's yeah, find out. Yeah, let's take a look. All right, there we go. So Sahad can deck him out in pirate. Nice. Dance. Look at that. Look at look that at full him. body tattoo. Look at him. Looking good. Yeah. This is what peak performance looks like. <laughs> and we got some. Hug Hug Dark. There's Dark Fact. Also from East One. Yeah, last, yeah. Really, really annoying last boss if you haven't played that uh, game yet. Oh my god. I, I have... Yeah, he's very irritating to fight. Let's see the mask. So we got some cool shades. Oh, that's a good look for him. Looks like I'd see him on a Harley on Sunset Boulevard. You also give him a monocle. Listening to like a Motley Crue record. See, look at that. That's just... That's, that's unsettling. I don't like him with that. Just give him the sunglasses. There. Give him back the sunglasses, man. Okay, oh, Sun and Moon Mess, those are from... There we go, there we go. Perfect. There we go. And uh, we'll have Fina cling on to him. Okay. We got Adol, so with Adol... It's going to make Alice, Adol really jealous. We got a few options here, so we got his classic silver armor. Classic. We also have his deserted pirate. Looking all... It's pretty dapper, matching. though. Yeah. And then we've also got... Uh... Beach day, tropic swimwear at all. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with classic, classic silver armor. How can you not? You gotta. You just, you, you just gotta. Um, we're gonna go full East One, mask of eyes. We'll have dark facts. Oh wow, he actually looks kind of cool. Right. And then her, we got. So with her, we got a the attorney and scholar. This is how everyone dresses in Eternia. This is like this was. This is all the rage. Um, plus we got tropic swimwear. Look at that. Tropic Swimmer. Beautiful. Yeah. And Deserted Pirate. Wow. Um, <laughs> so, let's give her a hug hug. And... Ooh, we actually have a really good question here from uh, Purincess Zelda. Huh. Um, can you switch between characters at any time you want? Uh, you can and you should mm -hmm. because, um, as Robert was mentioning earlier, um, certain enemies like these crabs here Every character in your in your party will have a different weapon type, and those will correspond to certain weaknesses of enemies. And so, um, if you're not using the right weapon against the enemy, then you're not going to be doing much damage at all. So, um, there's plenty of opportunities to get everybody in your party some some screen time if you'd want, but it's it's difficult to main one person unless there's a certain DLC you can use actually to um, make it so that your playable character you can solo the game essentially and use, and use it to switch out between. The, um, the types, but that's kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, well, sorry, that's not DLC, that is uh, uh, post game. Ah, uh, post game stuff. Yeah, 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 no, no DLC on that front. Um, whoa! Oh. Ho ho! Look at that. I meant to do that. I was totally not blocking and dodge rolling at the same time. Uh, Snot and Rocks asking if this is running at 60 frames per second. It is not. Uh, the game is uh, 30 frames per second. Yeah, Sir Belf, I think the Vita version didn't have that post-game 
uh, solo mode type stuff. I think that was only for the PS4. Mm -hmm. So again, because the content is the same as the PS4 version, um, I'm more than happy to do your second playthrough or third or beyond uh, soloing any character you'd like. Tease note. Now would be a good time to mention that we have some uh, cool merchandise. Thank you, off-screen person. Um, so, not so much in commemoration of the Switch version, but just to so let everybody know, um, we have lots of really cool merch for, for ESA, thanks to all of you. We actually ended up selling out pretty much of everything, but I'm happy to let you know that, um, that we have these two awesome t-shirts. Those, those are, well, those are Back in stock, here's the lovely Donna, Lucia, Adel Kristen, and then we have a new shirt. Uh, this is Dogi. Uh, can you bring it more into the camera, please, mystery person? Cool, Dogi. Um, his abs are well. The top four of his abs are prominently featured. So if you're worried about that, oh wait, no, no, we we were fully abbed here. So get the abs you've always dreamed by wearing a Dogi T-shirt. And then we also have uh, a new Dogi pin set. So the, the Dogi pin set contains our bro Dogi, um, Captain Barbaros, and then Little Paro. Mm -hmm. the Little Paro has a really cool secret. And then last but not least, um, we also have a limited edition for the game, which is just for the Switch version. Uh, the art book and the soundtrack are the same, however, the art book has been updated with the new localization to reflect all the terms and everything. Roberto spent quite a while getting that out. And then we also have uh, a really cool letter op opener featuring the Mistletine sword that Adel gets. So this is kind of a spoiler, but... Um, Adel gets an ultimate weapon, yeah. Sorry about that. We didn't mean to ruin that. Feel free to look away if you're a little worried about that. never played an RPG I'll before, the main character gets an ultimate weapon. I'll, I'll so. let you know when I'm done showing it. I'm going to show it in two. One. There it is. <laughs> Mistletime Sword Replica. It's actually pretty hefty. Um, it's not... It's not... Um, it's blunted, so you don't have to worry about that. The front is a little bit sharp, but it's more than sharp enough to open up your letters. Okay, I've taken it down if you're worried yeah. about it. And so it does come in this really cool collectible box. So, so the Frosties has a good question. What is it? How connected is this game to the other East? Will I be super confused if this is my first? Uh, no, you will not. The great thing about this series is that each each entry in it is kind of a separate standalone adventure that Adol uh, went on during his um, during his life as a young man, going on his many adventures, which are chronicled in his his various journals. So you can um, jump into the series at any point, and aside from you know maybe a few offhand references to other adventures he's been on, you won't be lost or feeling like you're you're not quite uh, getting what's getting what's happening yeah so yeah you can jump in here you can start at an earlier game um, but anywhere you jump in you're fine the only the only games that I'd say you have to be careful about would be um, don't start at East 2 because it's really heavily connected with East 1 correct and then don't start with Origins because uh, it's also really connected to 1 and 2 so other than that you can start anywhere you like mm -hmm. hey can either of you watch my dog this weekend VR with my dad. Depends. I don't know. Are you in Southern California? What kind of dog is it? Or can you provide transportation to your place? Yeah, I have, I have questions about this offer. <laughs> this is Allison. A, uh, she's a seamstress. You can tell because she's got a beauty mark, I guess. Well, that and she introduced herself as one. But... Man, Dogi just looks. Oh, I'm sorry. Saha. Uh, Saha just looks slick as, slick as all get out. In another life, I think they were like siblings. Well, I don't know. I think Saha here got quite the paunch as opposed to Dogi. I mean, Dogi works out. Dogi, you know, Dogi, Dogi does CrossFit. <laughs> also like to take this opportunity to introduce the person running our chat. Um, her name is Sandy. 
Sandy has uh, been with the company for a long time now. Uh, she is our community manager. Oh, she's actually going to pop over and say hi. Hello. Um, and so if you do any interaction with us via uh, social media, essentially, um, you'll be speaking with, with Sandy. Sandy's super cool. Um, Sandy's also a pretty huge Pudinces Suzelda fan as well. Oh, Sandy with an I, not with a Y. One of her, uh, her small things that you want to <laughs> want to be careful about. Uh, but she's also she's all, she's very very awesome, and uh, we love her. So just wanted to introduce her as well. So right now we're in Castaway Village, or rather, what what will over time become Castaway Village. Currently it's a bonfire and some uh, an anvil, some, some, some hammocks. It's not, it's not much to look at at the moment, but over time it will become a, a bustling, thriving community of, uh, you know, of shipwrecked passengers. Um, and part of, the, part of this game is going around the island and rescuing each of these passengers and as they join your village you know they it unlocks new facilities and features that you can make use of to become stronger and explore more of the island so there's a nice there's a nice uh, gameplay loop that this game um, introduces you know it introduces the put uh, the player to yeah it's super it's super addicting too the more you yeah. the more you play the more you want to keep on playing so yeah. that's uh, it's always good when a game does that at least mm -hmm. I've always enjoyed that so mm -hmm. You never really feel like you're okay to like put it down. It's like, no, I want to, you know, see one more location or unlock another skill or just something mm -hmm. like that. So yeah. it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. So as you unlock more, as you find more more castaways, you can access other sections of the island. So you may come across an area uh, where you know it's blocked off because you don't have enough people to clear whatever whatever mess is currently. Um, obstructing you um, and then you come back to it a bit later and you're able to check it out and um, see what you know see see what it's all about um, for those of you who just joined us we are playing East 8 Lacrimosa of Donna on the Nintendo switch we're obviously uh, playing it in docked mode right now <laughs> the other thing too is if you're what 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 you know what good would an uh, island be if you also couldn't get some get some fishing some fishing going so right now... JRPGs and fishing, man. I tell they love you. it. They love it. I think the first time I ever played a, a fishing game in a JRPG was Breath of Fire 3. And I was like, what in the world is this? And then I realized it was a thing much later. Look at that. What a catch. Oh, We're people have been uh, wondering again. So this is, uh, this is Switch. <laughs> this is the Switch version of uh, Issei Lacrimosa of Donna. Mm -hmm. It's coming... Out June 26th for $59.99 uh, dollars. I don't know how many Canada bucks or Maybe anything I should else. check on Allison. Maybe you should. I'm sure she's traumatized by her by her experience. Uh, is the stream okay? Yeah. I, I'm not good. sure. Hey, Sandman, is the stream moving okay? Everything's running okay on my side. Okay. Good to know. Just making sure we don't want anyone to miss this. All right. Uh, for Europe, I believe it comes out the 29th. We usually release games on Friday in Europe and Tuesday out here. That's just kind of the industry standard. Um, so Sandy can uh, verify for me and let you know there. That's a good look for Lakshya, too. You can hardly tell that she's a, she's a uptight noble woman. I don't know. That's an elegant swimsuit. It is. Uh, yeah. It's certainly... Certainly suits her. You are welcome, Scalander. Yeah. So Allison's going to join the village as your first official uh, armor-providing NPC. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, as as Robert mentioned, one of the cool features of this game is. Because a lot of the gameplay loop is you going out and finding your fellow castaways, uh, most of them will add some kind of new service for you mm -hmm. at the village, and the village expands and everything. So if you've ever played games like uh, Skies of Arcadia or the, some of the Suicoden games, it's kind of reminiscent of that, in that you get to watch your, your base expand. And so another, another uh, 
cool aspect of this game is, unlike unlike most other JRPGs, there's no uh, currency to speak of. So if you want to purchase anything really, you need to provide the necessary materials to create it. Um, yeah, so enemies are always, they've always got sick drops. So you can mm -hmm. use those drops and then again, you can either barter for stuff once more shops open later, or they can, like Allison here, she can use them to create uh, new items for you. Mr. Mingo asked, does the Switch version come with anything different? Um, in terms of what's inside the game itself, again, this is uh, content-wise, it has the same content as the PlayStation 4, plus uh, the DLC of, of the uh, PlayStation Vita version. So it's definitely the most um, complete version, I guess you could say, of the game. Um, is it, has it gone gold or is it still in development? Uh, I want to say... It's still being... I don't know that it's gone gold yet. Maybe Sandy can can chime in on that. But it, it, if it hasn't, it's very close. So we're looking at the map right now, and you can see we just got here. We've got only, what, 5% of this island map? Like, this is, this is a big island um, that we are stuck on. Um, how are we going to get around? Well, thankfully, we have fast travel at our disposal. And so as long as you inter find any of these... Uh, Big honk and save crystals, you can immediately warp to them and continue on your merry way. Yeah, East is definitely, even from its earlier incarnations, it's always been a game that really respects the player's time. Um, things move really briskly, um, and there's a lot to be seen in this game. I, I think most people, if you blow through it, maybe, maybe 45 to 50. Um, if you take your time, I think you could spend 100 hours here. But it, it's always like constantly, quickly moving things. So. And so because we found Allison, this sandstone obstruction uh, can now be cleared. So let's go ahead and make a help request. And everyone from the village is going to show up and work very hard. All six of us? I think, Ogi, I think Dogi's abs could do it by themselves. Yeah, yeah. Just like, pow! He just flexes and the rocks just get intimidated and scurry away. We're sorry, sir. Okay, now we've got this whole section of beach at our disposal. Um, got some coconuts. The coconuts. Um, you get your healing items. So the way healing items work in this game is they come in two types. There's um, three types actually. There's food you cook yourself, and that food can bestow various um, temporary buffs upon eating it. Um, there's fruit items, and those come in basic and ripened versions. The ripened versions heal more HP. Ooh, nice, Robert and they also can revive you from death. And then finally, there are bottled potions, and you have to make those yourself, but you are limited. Um, the, the number of potions you can make total is limited by the number of glass bottles you find. Um, so as you progress through the game and find more glass bottles, you'll be able to make more, but even then you're always dealing with a, a kind of a finite amount of uh, potions. And then also, compared to um, fruit items and food, potions heal a percentage of your health, not a flat amount, so they're very much more useful um, for kind of like quick uh, burst healing. Um, so you're going to be wanting to be more, uh, use them more sparingly. Um, Ooh. Oh. 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 No. Oh. So we're going to run away. Um. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so we're just gonna run back here. Oh, okay, and now all better, all refreshed. It's like I wasn't even dead. Yeah, the crystals they will they, they fully heal you, so they're pretty, pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Another thing to point out: those glass bottles I mentioned before. If you're playing this on the harder, hardest of hard difficulties, the the legendary Inferno difficulty, those glass bottles will break when you use them. Woo! So all the more reason to be very, very careful using them. In addition to everything in Inferno mode, just doing so much damage, so much damage, and yeah, it's good yeah. stuff. So if you're into it, if 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 you're into you know really testing yourself, challenges, difficulty, you know, uh, this game has it in spades if you if you're if you're up for it. But the Inferno mode of I'll tell you what I'm up for. You say this chair. Any, Thank you. any East game uh, is not to be trifled with. 
Yeah, I remember speaking with the the devs a while back, and apparently some people inside the Atlas or why did I say that? Inside the Falcom office, they can't even beat it either. So, not for the faint of heart on the no, on Inferno difficulty. I want to destroy that bird's home so I can get its delicious eggs. Oh, didn't drop any. I destroyed that home for nothing. <laughs> I think by this point I might have I might have learned some new skills, so let me take a look at that real quick. Oh, yeah, look. Oops, looks like we have. They're extremely delicious, Mr. Mingo. Organic, cage free, ethical. Oh yeah. Can you tell we're from Southern California? They're not cruelty free though. We did have to destroy a bird's <laughs> nest to, this is true. This to is get very them, true. so 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 just there's that little caveat there. What is this? Hey, we found some wheat. Cool. Um, and it looks like I see a, I see a fishy splashing over yonder. So, um, so that's about the fishing. Is every character can fish, and every character is um, is good at certain things about fishing. So Hod is kind of be going to be your most cons um, consistent fisherman compared to the rest of the cast. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna cast this bad boy out and see what we reel in. Could be something delicious. Could be treasure. Could be me. Could pressing, be absolutely nothing. Could be me pressing the button too soon. <laughs> How do? Oh, you already you already you already answered that. <laughs> um. Oh, what is it? Oh, mash it! I'm mashing it! I'm mashing it! Get! Heck yes! It's a. Uh, it's a Saren Trout. Thick hide, strong shell. And then fishing is also how you get resources. Thick hide, strong shell, white meat. These are all things that are used uh, in various crafting recipes, food, accessories, whatnot. So you are strongly, strongly encouraged to explore every nook and cranny, every resource node, and um, take what you can find because it, it will benefit you later. Right here, we got some small leaves. Beat up these wild dogs. Robert, what's this flash guard? So flash guard, you'll notice if you guard, there's that little, that little, you see that? A little aura thing that kind of pops up. Ready, so, right, so. So if you time that just right, right when the enemy's attacking, you will enter what's called a flash guard. When flash guard occurs, you are invulnerable, and all of your attacks do critical damage for a few seconds. Um, in addition to flash guard, there's also flash move. If you evade right when the enemy is about to attack, you will slow down time. Um, you can combine these two. For so, what I like to do is I like to flash move. If I can time it right, that is. I'd like to flash move and trigger that, and then while you're in a flash move status, you can then trigger flash guard, and it's easier to trigger the flash guard because you've slowed the enemy's movements. Mm. Sounds like a so, solid tip. Yeah. Very solid tip. If you want to do the harder difficulties, you have to yeah. you basically have to master flash move and flash guard and not take any damage from bosses and the like using those using you know those abilities um, to to survive. Um, Otherwise, they will they will smear you all over the island. <laughs> like it. Another thing to note too is that as you use your, you're gonna wanna every time you, we're killing an enemy here, you'll see the blue um, blue sparks, I guess, mm -hmm. that come out and they fill up the uh, the SP, meter on the right side. SP right there, that blue bar. The SP uh, you get it pretty plentifully. And it's important that you use it uh, to activate your skills because the more you use your skills, the more they level up. So the game really encourages you to uh, constantly be using your skills so that they get, they'll get stronger and um, you'll be stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no reason not to base basically always yeah always you always be using skills. Always be. Yeah, there's no. There's no no clever acronym for that one, unfortunately. I was racking my brain all night before the stream, trying to come up with. <laughs> trying to come up with a. Uh, yeah, you know, I watched Glenn Gary. I watched that reference. movie like six times, trying to come up with an acronym, and just it didn't. It didn't. It, it, it didn't, didn't come. Take, down. No. And then I was like. Ooh, always be skilling. 
Mr. Mingo. Abs? You know who else has abs? Oh boy. Dogie, Dogie needs to say it. Just bring Dogie in. Mm -hmm. Second prize is a... <laughs> a set of abs. <laughs> <laughs> there is no third prize. Um, Masak uh, brings up the music is beautiful. Indeed, it is. The East games, all of Falcom's games, honestly, are known for their excellent music. They have what's called the uh, JDK Sound Team. Um, and they, they actually function as a band, too. Like, mm -hmm. they go to places and perform music live. Um, and the music is really, really gorgeous um, in all of Falcom's games. Um, last year when we were doing a lot of the promo for this game, Mr. Kondo, who's the, of course the president of Nihon Falcom as well as the, the director and writer on this game, he, um, he mentioned that one of the key focuses when they were making Issei was, um, because we, he often got posed the question, why, why is the music always so good in Falcom games? Um, and they said that the, the, the key thing is melody. Um, there's sometimes, you know, there's definitely a school of, of, of music composition where you listen and it's very ambient, um, and it might really fit the, the scene or the location um, or things, something like that, but it might not be necessarily memorable beyond the fact that it was like, oh, that was pleasant and fitting for the area. Um, and Falcom Sound Team, um, quite the opposite. They, they really try to make melodies that stick in your brain so that even after you've turned off the game, you know, you'll be humming it or whistling it and it'll come back to you. So. It's a, it's a really cool approach to composition. It certainly pays off because mm -hmm. I know I love the music and I, that's usually one of the f first things you hear about Falcom um, from fans is like, oh my god, their music is so good. Yeah, no, the music is great. Um, I, god, the, the boss music is probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. my, just my favorite track. Every time a boss fight happens, you just get I just get so pumped up, you know, ready to get my butt kicked. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, it's it's definitely good music to get to get stomped by. Um, <laughs> That's what we should have called the soundtrack: music to get stomped by. Uh, well, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll just put a pin in that for. <laughs> Man, you're really doing good on these flashcards. Yeah, totally, totally. You need to just just, just need to do cure it yourself. Purpose, purpose. You yeah. Have. So yeah, I kind of, I must have left the village too hastily. Did not prepare any necessary. Healing items. Uh, nice. Yeah. So, as you'll you'll see here, that Adel just got a new skill, which we yeah. can equip here. Skills. If if you uh, sorry, we should have brought this up earlier. Mm -hmm. What you do is you assign skills to um, one of your four face buttons, and then by holding down um, R and pressing the corresponding face button, it'll trigger the skill, mm -hmm. provided you have enough skill points. Yeah. And skills are learned. You have a chance to learn a skill every time you strike an enemy, but Busto! but you know I saw him coming and I still jumped. <laughs> Sandy, how you doing over there? My heart flew out of my chest. <laughs> nice. Sandy, Sandy, nice. pick up your heart, put it back in your chest. The, the beating is distracting. Um, <laughs> no, um, yeah, so you have a chance to learn a skill every time you deal damage to an enemy with your attacks. The thing is, is um, if the enemy is like same level or weaker, it's a very, very low chance. Conversely, stronger enemies, higher level enemies, you know, beating on them, you're more likely to learn a skill. So. You're encouraged to at least test your metal against these stronger enemies in hopes of learning, you know, skills sooner that will serve you as you, you know, face new new enemies and challenges. I believe there is fish down here. I do. You see that ripple down there? So nice. we're gonna we're gonna have Laxia do some fishing. Now nice. Laxia comparatively Laxia cannot send her line out as far because she's a relatively novice fisherman, but she's lucky, so she's more likely to reel in rarer catches compared to um, everyone else. Mash, 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 mash. And what we Ooh, got this here? this one looks like might be pretty good. Yeah, we got a, we got a Amana. Amana. Got some white meat, some digitalis. Yeah, it's full of leaves and meat. Heck yeah. All right. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Ooh. And then right now we're kind of um, early in the game, so some of the, I mean, you've already seen the beach 
Um, this is kind of like you know rocky crags. There's a lot of yeah. different environments you'll visit in this game. Mm -hmm. um, we're not even you know going to get into any of Donna's stuff. Donna actually has her own whole playable side of this whole scenario. So there's really a lot of content in the game and a lot of cool stuff to see. So even though it, it is set on an island, the island is very varied in the types of environments that it has. So. Always something new to see. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Bedframe asks, um, is it okay to jump into the series at this point? It absolutely is. Um, you can hop in anywhere in the series that you'd like, except for two or origins. I would not recommend those because they're very heavily linked to one. Um, but this is just as good a place as any. Um, all of the games are fun. Um, while the games definitely do have a tendency to, to build off each other in terms of gameplay and systems, they're all super fun in their own right. So start here, start anywhere you'd like. So this is deliberate. Um, this is actually a feature in other East games, but if you're outdoors and you're, you need some healing, you just stand still, still ah, good point. and get your health back. Provided there's no enemies nearby. Yeah, if they're, no if they're wailing on you, then sorry. Yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't power through that. You're not dope. You. <laughs> One of these days... Hopefully, in my lifetime, we get to play as Dogi. Um, I don't care if it's like a five minute long game because Dogi is broken. Ah. I, just, I would just love to play as Dogi. Bro, you, you, <laughs> are, you are tripping up everybody with that mask. Adol's face is not a mask. This is, um, this is DLC. This is uh, DLC that's already that's included. Yeah. Um, so you can take off the mask because... I don't know, there's a Batman reference in here, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not smart enough for it. Yeah, no, we got uh, DLCs included for the low, low price of free. So let's go ahead and I'll take off the mask of eyes. And put on the moon mask. Ooh. You get to see like 70% of Adol's face. Hey, look, there's fishies. Wonder what I got. I wonder what you got, Robert. Right. No. Are you the knight? <laughs> I am. I mean, I am. You're the vengeance. Oh yeah, I caught a what is a Garvis. Garvis. Don't know that I'd like to eat that. Doesn't look edible. Looks like some kind of bottom feeding worm eel. Doesn't look very tasty. Looks like it requires a lot of prep time to make it into something palatable. Alright, so what we did, I lowered that branch, that log earlier, and so now if I'm coming up from the nameless coast, rather than going around that whole that whole route, you know, to get to here, I can just take the shortcut. Take the shortcut. If you ever played Dark Souls, Bloodborne, you're used to like making shortcuts to make backtracking easier. This this island has that in spades. And so it is at once perilous to navigate, but also strangely convenient at times. It's 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 interesting. Almost as like it was as though it was designed. But by who? <laughs> this island is full of mysteries. Uh, something else you'll notice too, which was originally introduced in the PS4 version, is that um, as you'll play, there's actually night. So there's like a, a, a day-night cycle. And at night, the enemies um, will be a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. Some different things you can do. So that's kind of a cool mm -hmm. feature as well. Yeah, the, yeah the, 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 the night versions of the dungeons are... are, are Completely separate entities with whole mo new monsters that come out at night, new items to find, like, and they're much tougher than their daytime counterparts. So, yeah, when you get the chance to, to do to do uh, you know night missions and, and check visit those places, like definitely definitely go for it. You won't regret it. <coughs> yeah, Beowulf Cav says that uh, dang night is series first. And yeah, I think it is actually. I can't think of any other one. That has it in it. Yeah, I think you're right. Something else to mention too uh, is that the the voice acting we we completely redid that when we uh, when we did the um, the reloc. Mm -hmm. So all of the all of the voices actually are, with the exception of some incidental battle voices, mm -hmm. um, it's all been completely recorded to match. Mm -hmm. So we hope you we hope you like that as well. We feel like the talent really. Um, Robert and I were both there for the recording, mm -hmm. and we, we feel like the talent really really got into the characters, and so hopefully it, it shows in the uh, in the voice work they did.
You have to suck it up, Laxia. Robert, Robert playing playing hardcore mode over here with the people. Um, who are the two guys playing the game? Says J Mac. Hi, I'm Alan. I'm Robert. So, <laughs> to answer your question a little bit more, I'm a I'm a producer here at NIS America, which is mm -hmm. kind of a nebulous term that means I do a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but mainly related to the business end of things, although personally I do a lot more PR-related stuff. Mm -hmm. And Robert here is a... I am a senior level editor and project coordinator. Uh, my main responsibilities uh, consist of uh, localizing translated Japanese text uh, and performing other duties related to the uh, uh, localization and publishing of uh, completed game titles. But mostly I edit text. It's about pretty much what I'm doing in a given day is writing something. <clears throat> yeah. Can we show night gameplay? Do you think we'll hit any or no? Uh, I don't think we'll hit any on, on this um, on this playthrough, unfortunately. Sorry. Which is unfortunate because the night dungeons have an are, are You are the, welcome the, to the, the music's really good at night, <laughs> let's just say that. It is. It is. Um you like glow sticks, you'll like night mode. <laughs> uh, Masik says, are, are we hiring software developers? That's a great question because uh, we actually do not do any development here at NIS America. We are strictly a, uh, a publisher um, and localizers, obviously. Um, all of the, um, I shouldn't say all, but most of the, uh, the programming that gets done is done um, over in Japan, usually by the original developers, or when we're doing something like Steam or a port, we'll work with an outside company. But we personally do not do any uh, development in-house. So, Still rocking the sunglasses? Even at night. you got to rock them at night. The sun never sets on cool, Robert. <laughs> Plus it makes it easier to just stare at the fire if you're, uh, you know your sunglasses at night. It's true. In, um, in honor of the fact that you worked on this game, Robert, are you going to get some uh, Sahara-esque tattoos yourself? I am not. Um, That's a I, shame. Yeah, I, I, I would like to add some more to the repertoire, my repertoire, but um, at the moment, yeah. I, it's, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Those are those are some cool tats. I feel like you have to earn those. Like, Sahad probably got those tattoos by, like, Slaying a kraken or something. Well, you you earned it by working on the game, Robert. Well, that's true, but like, <laughs> I guess I guess the, I guess it was a kraken of sorts. Indeed, a kraken, depending on your regional dialect. <laughs> Ooh, Bale of Cap brought up something um, cool. We actually have we, we did a reversible cover contest for the Switch version of the game. It's not um, it, it's finished now. However, all of we've made all the covers covers available for you to download if you'd like. I'm sure um, Sandy can link. To the, the website. Um, if you're looking to print them out, um, you can use your old at home inkjet, but you might want to take it to like Kinko's or whatever your friendly lo local copier place is. Um, I know that they can they have high grade paper and things like that, and you can make something that's pretty comparable to what the, the cover sheets actually look like for the game if there's one particular piece of artwork that you prefer. Or as Masik says, thank you, Masik, for hopping up. Uh, Staples, that's always a good choice as well. Yeah, pause RPG, uh, double dipping. For those of you who did play the Vita version, um, I think it's a pretty good value proposition. Personally, I'm the kind of person who... Wow, that was really good, huh? No, that still works. Personally, I'm the kind of person. Yeah, it's still okay. Um, when I play RPGs, I'm, I'm mainly in it for the story. So although the gameplay has been enhanced, especially when it comes to uh, Donna's modes um, and things like that, as well as the night dungeons and a lot of cool stuff like that, there's a lot there, but for me, what the real sell, as it were, is, is that there's a lot more uh, side backstory to, to Donna, mm -hmm. especially to her role as a, as the maiden of the great tree. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if you're someone who's really into story and things like that, I think there's a lot to offer in the um, in this version of the game. Oh, definitely, definitely. It certainly flushes out um, details that were not super focused on in the Vita version. There's a couple new characters within that too. There's um, Eo, who is this little girl who comes and pesters Donna occasionally, mm -hmm. um, and her role is really cool. And then there's Ras Rastal, who, um, depending on how you read it, may or may not be a, uh, a love interest, or a potential love interest for well, Donna. He's a male childhood friend of Donna's, so you can draw your own conclusions on that front, but uh, yeah, yeah. 
he definitely plays a larger role in the backstory. So we're gonna we're gonna call out uh, Sahad on on ripping one right now. There it is. There it is. It's the man of the land. No. Uh... <laughs> And, you know, Laxia is such a trooper for, like... Putting up with him? Yeah, <laughs> just... Let's get some shut eye, you two. Oh, she's done. Oh, she's not done. Let's see, so am I missing out on anything if I bought the PS4 version, not the Switch? E. Johns. Uh, yeah, you are, and it's the costumes, actually. There was uh, costumes on the Vita version that never made it over to PS4, and they are in the Switch version. Mm -hmm. So if costumes are your bag, um, this might be for you. But uh, content-wise, in terms of all of the added stuff for Donna, uh, with her form changes, as well as her, her story information and the secret dungeons and the night stuff, uh, no, that's all the same as the PS4 version. And then let's also not forget that, you know, with the Switch version, you're also getting um, all that content plus portability. Uh, it's very difficult True. to have a uh, lug your PS4 around <laughs> and use it as a portable console. Um, but in terms of story content, yeah, 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 they're 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 the same. Ooh, speaking of uh, the maiden of the great tree. Ooh. So this is the the titular Donna from Lacrimosa of Donna. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a slow build into her part of the story. Mm -hmm. um, so with these fireside chats when they turn in for the night, Adel will have these dreams and he'll get these. Uh, these these uh, uh, he'll 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 just see glimpses of, of this past of this past civilization or ancient civilization that, that, that well we don't know at that point we right <laughs> this this mysterious civilization um, and, and and this girl Donna who's like at the center of all these dreams um, and and he wakes up every morning feeling dazed and confused by what he's just... For so long, it's not true. He needed a woman, but he never bargained for Donna. You set me up for that. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm also the resident music nerd in the company, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that, though. You're very welcome. Always pleased to plug Zap. <laughs> but, yeah, and these, uh, these Donna parts are really cool because these kind of start out with... Um, you know, just these quick vignettes that don't even really have movement beyond those those pictures, mm -hmm. and they, they they turn into actually being able to play as Donna. So, mm -hmm. it's we, you, we know as as we play through the game that mm -hmm. Donna and Adol, for whatever reason, actually share this kind of mind link, um, mm -hmm. and it's really cool to see throughout the game how their stories intertwine uh, one with the other. At this point, I don't really know. <laughs> How many people out there watching or about to play aren't familiar with with, with uh, the game, especially since it's already come out before? Mm -hmm. But if you haven't, um, the story is really great. It's pro it's by far the uh, the most story intensive East game out there, mm -hmm. um, which is which is pretty cool because um, all of the East games actually I felt they've had very good narratives, even even the early ones like like you know one and two, which weren't super narrative focused. But they do they do a really good job, in my opinion, of, of making you feel like there's this there's this neat. Mm -hmm world yeah. that this person named Adel explored. I'm, and I'm going through East One right now, actually. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm you like it? Up, I'm going up the tower, so I'm, I'm, I'm nearing the end. Yeah, you are, actually. Yeah. Did Dogi burst through yet? I, I went back. I, I, I got caught in the trap all three times so he could burst through all three cells, and the third time he's like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> but I got a Steam achievement for it, so, you nice. know, it was nice. worth it. <laughs> So this is Donna when she was a, a wee one. Mm -hmm. We meet her a little later. Before her name was all caps. <laughs> Something interesting, too, is actually um, all of... So Donna's a, what's called an attorney, and she's very... So they're all very tall people. Mm -hmm. and they're just... Even though they're, you know, they have the same humanoid shape that we do, they're very tall. Mm -hmm. And Donna turns out it's one of the short ones. So it's funny. She gets... They, they call that out several times throughout the game. E. Johns is working his way, or her way, sorry, uh, through, slowly through the series. Where are you at right now? Which one are you on?
It's Olga. I don't believe I can say the name because the uh, the talent did not put it up on her site, but Olga's voice actress in English absolutely nailed it. It's her, oh my god, she did such a good job. Mm -hmm. Olga's kind of, we, we get to see her, she's one of Donna's best friends. Um, uh, she has a very authoritative role, and she, um, the, the role really called for someone with a very, I don't want to say like, rude or snooty way to put it, but just very commanding. Commanding but warm at the same time. Yeah, and, yeah. and her voice actress absolutely nailed it. So. Oh, yeah. Origins, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Good luck. Nightmare. Yeah. You're braver <laughs> than me. I can't do I can't do the hardest, like, uh, hard difficulty my first time through. Uh, even, even my second time, like, it, uh, at a certain point it's like, I don't have anything to prove. So hats off <laughs> to the people who can do it, man, cuz cuz you're you're better you're better than me. <laughs> and I know East especially like on the on Nightmare and Up is like just super difficult. Yeah. You Jones, you played 1 and 2 first though, right? Before hopping into Origins? So yeah, meaty story here. Mm -hmm. Lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. We probably should have voiced this. I'm realizing, like on the stream, I mean, like we could have been ah, uh, we could have, we could have been Donna. I could have been Olga. It's true. You could have heard my Olga accent. Ah, uh, wow, <laughs> great. Uh, <laughs> That's why they didn't cast me. <laughs> Well, he, he did audition, but, you know, we, yeah. we just found someone, someone a little better. Take her in a different, better direction. <laughs> yeah, they oh, like you started with Origins. Wow, okay, yeah. yeah. As Beowulf mentioned, it is a prequel to 1 and 2. But, hey, it's cool. You'll play 1 and 2 next, and then you'll yeah. kind of see how everything intertwines. It'll be neat. It'll there's actually no, be There's neat. no wrong order. There's no wrong order. Like, you know, there's, there's yeah, you enjoy it. You're doing great. Hello, Drax TD. How's it going? That was a very long dream. Another beautiful day today. Surprisingly, it's actually not a very beautiful day here in Southern California. It's been cloudy all day, which yeah. is not something we get very much of. Man, you'll notice that uh, Adol is wearing his silver armor, which is kind of his classic armor from the first few ga uh, games. It is a um, originally it was it was DLC, but now you you just get it when you get the PS or I'm sorry the uh, the Switch version. So really really cool. Definitely harkens back to if you have played the older East games, this is uh, Adol's classic look. Sorry to hear that, Drax, that you're having some issues with the store, I'm, I'm sure. Sandy, who's the community manager, she can uh, reach out to you and let you and hopefully give you some quick help. Sorry about that. We do have, um, speaking of the store, we do have, we still have copies of the, um, the limited edition of the Switch version left, so if you were uh, interested in that, we still have a few copies left, I think, so definitely check it out. I believe this is the first real dungeon of the game, uh, the Towering Coral Forest. Um, and this is actually one of the uh, one of the zones that later becomes available for um, for night missions. Night missions. Uh, but we're here for the first time during the day. We're gonna have to make our way through. Um, this is a fun little this is a fun little instance.
Oh, thanks, J Mac. We we do put a lot of effort into our Ellie's limited editions. Actually, um, just about it. Well, all of us who work here are, are big fans of games ourselves. Um, and so, whenever we do approach a limited edition, it's it's usually like, what, what would we like as fans? And then we've also, um, for those of you who are familiar, every year during the July Fourth weekend, we have um, uh, Anime Expo, which is in Los Angeles. And we've um, done surveys pretty much every year for the past three or four years now, where we actually talk to fans and say, what what do you want in a limited edition? What do you think would be cool? Um, and so we, we put kind of our own internal, what would we want? And then mixed with like, what would you as the fans like? And so we've we've come up with some really cool stuff over the years. I, th I think my favorite would have to be the E8 Ellie. That's a really, really nice Ellie. Um, I have one myself, actually. Um, but yeah, pretty much everyone that we do is, is is pretty cool. We try to whenever we can to we um a lot of times the developers, you know, they didn't maybe hadn't planned for it. So when when we hit them up, they're usually really excited to to work on a limited edition, mm -hmm. and they'll open their vaults as it were sometimes for um cool like you know promotional art that was only available in Japan or sketches you know when they were still designing the characters and things like that. So if those are the kind of things you're interested in, I definitely um definitely see what we've got if it's a game that you like from us. Sized enemy crab. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no, he was too quick. Light bone. Maybe since we're kind of getting down here, let's uh, switch to Laxa and let's show her really cool special move. I love it. Yeah. On, on an enemy. Want to see her extra? Yeah, see what the X go. Um, Which won't be great for that enemy, but, Yeah, like, you know. He's not, they don't deserve to die by an X skill, these, these, these crabs. That sounds like something like should actually say to him, right? You don't deserve to die by my EX skill. Robert just tearing through right here. Yeah, the EX skills are awesome, as you can tell. They do a lot of damage. Um, a lot of times, especially in the higher difficulties, that'll be the uh, the make or break in a really tough boss battle. <laughs> yeah, buy yourself some, some some seconds of invulnerability. Yep. Yep. I like Sahat's butt bomb thing. Yeah, I broke him with my butt. I don't think we're going to be able to get through this whole forest before, before the stream ends, unfortunately. Ah. Maybe we can rush to the boss and see if I can get any meaning. Uh, I gotta find, yeah, I gotta find the gloves. Oh, right. right. So, we may not get to them in time, so... Oh, and then there's, there's going to be an event here, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not going to happen. It's so, okay, but... No, we're not going to spoil the boss, so that's good. No. That's good. One one cool gameplay feature, unfortunately, we didn't get to get to, is that you will find... Um, Ooh, this crab is gnarly. Adventure, adventuring gear, it's called. And what it is, it's basically like little equipment you equip... Things you equip out of battle to give you, like, some extra extra feature. Oh, no! Oh! oh. So, like, for example, there are these gloves you can actually find in this forest, and they allow you to climb um, vines and such. Um... To, act, to you know, give you some vertical reach and 
access areas that, you know, previously uh, inaccessible to you. Haha, -ha, flash guard. So, so uh... So those, I, those gloves Edna, are gonna Edna over here is telling me to, to wrap it up. So, uh... Man. Um, thanks for joining us today. This is, uh... The Nintendo Switch version of E8 Lacrimosa Donna. I'm Alan. This was uh, my lovely assistant, Robert. Robert. And we really appreciate.